My dear brother, my exalted prince, I am greatly distraught as it has been many days that you have not dedicated a portion of your splendid words to me. For pleasant words are sweeter than honey. Your words are pure and refined. Guide me in the path of your instruction. With these words, Leona Levia opens her letter to one of her brothers. This letter is, letter is indeed an extraordinary document in many aspects. It is an early example of an ego document from the Jewish world. It was written in Hebrew by a young adult, and most extraordinary was written by a girl. And maybe the most extraordinary fact about this letter, the fact that it has survived. In this letter, I will examine the phenomenon of in, in this lecture, I will examine the phenomenon of letter writing by young adults in early modern Italian Jewish communities, among them these extraordinary letters of Leona Levia of the Fano family. This letter um, survived in the form of an igron, a letter writing manual composed probably in the 1560s and survived in manuscript format until it was published by Akov Books and Boim in recent decades. The mastering of the art of letter writing was an important part of the education of, young, of a young person among early modern Italian Jewry. Parents insisted that tutors and teachers included letter writing as part of the curriculum instead of time dedicated to learning Torah. Um, we, can imagine, we will see that conflict later on as they saw it as pivotal to the vocational training of the young and their social status. The training in the art of letter writing was composed both of practicing of handwriting itself, but mostly of learning formulas and the correct style for each type of letter. The latter was achieved through a process of emulation, copying letters and formulating letters according to existing letters. For this purpose, teachers, teachers kept collections of modified original, real, real letters. Um, and they, um, became, they got the name of Igronim. So instead of composing letter writing manuals, as we, we were familiar with many examples, both from the Jewish and from the non-Jewish world from later, deca later decades, um, uh, they, they used original letters, which they usually um, eliminated the dates, the names, the places, and used those, although they contain many details that were probably could not be copied. They're not these formulas of, um, dear father, I miss you, I send regards to my mother, your son, which often exist in letter writing manuals per se. These are letter with very detailed information besides names and places. Um, as letters that were used as exemplary letters, the correspondence surviving in the Igronim can teach us both about the particular lives and thoughts of the writers, as well as reflect on broader sentiments, lifestyles, and relationships. We can assume that the letters selected to be kept were perceived as conveying a more general sentiment than just a specific um, um, example. Um, nevertheless, these letters received only fleeting scholarly attention. Um, even Buxenboim, who published six volumes of these letters, and in that, um, you know, and made them accessible. Um, attributed only limited historical val value to them, and I'm quoting him. These collections of letters belong to the kind of sources on which history has left only accidental imprint. As the material, of the as a, the material for the reconstruction of history, they are not the bricks from which foundations may be laid or pillars built, but they are useful, however, to correct defects and fill in gaps. They contain minor historical and biographical details that can occasionally focus a fuzzy picture, particularly regarding daily life and genealogical links. In fact, they are not generously endowed with the facts and real detail. Most of their, 
verbiage is given to flowery language and ceremonial courtesy that befits the spirit of the time, that is the Renaissance. No, nor did they reflect free and spontaneous expression since these letters were overseen by teachers who both corrected and censored them. So I imagine that in this context today I do not need to persuade you regarding the value of such documents. Um, rather, I will proceed to discuss the nature of two correspondences I would like to focus on today and at this preliminary stage offer some examples to what we can learn from them and what they convey. So the first um, collection of letters that I, I will talk about is that of the Fano family. It's a rather limited uh, collection of 45 letters written during, written during a period of about two and a half years between 1558 and 1560. Um, as opposed to other egonim, these letters were copied um, or remained in their original um, format. We have the names, we have the dates, we have the openings. Um, of this collection, I will discuss the correspondence between the, the younger, not the youngest, but the older daughter of the family, Leona, and her two brothers, Yaakov and Yosef. Um, I sort of mapped the, the family correspondence. Um, you can see that at the center is the father of Ram Yoshua Fano, and he mostly corresponds with his nephew, who runs, who's his agent and runs his business, and his two sons. But a few of the letters are between Leona and she corresponds with one brother. We have both sides of it, but she also writes letters to what we assume is the other brother. She only she calls him my brother, so we don't know which one of them, but probably the older brother by the way she um, approaches him and um, how she regards him. Um, this is their, their, the letters were written while, while the family was in Lugo. Um, the other correspondence is much more extensive. Um, the Kalmi family, which holds 300 letters written between the years 1570 and 1578, and there are multiple family members um, and uh, business partners, which are often also family members. Um, and among them, we have the letters of the three older brothers, Yekutiel, Moshe, and Avraham, who correspond among themselves and with their parent, the father and with other family relatives, but I'll only concentrate on those between um, the brothers today. So I approach these uh, letters um, I mean, with much excitement because obviously one of the biggest methodological problems when um, writing the history of childhood is the lack of sources written by children and young adults themselves. So here we have um, what is hopefully a rather um, original and authentic um, expression of the young, which as we know also from the research on Dutch um, diaries of children was always censored and reducted by the adults, but nevertheless this was indeed written by these um, young adults and not you know, from a perspective like memoirs um, and, and other um, documents of that sort. So, um, and this is just uh, so you can um, see how it looked in the manuscript. This is, this is a letter of, if you can see the, the signature down there, Achotcha Ktana Leona Levia Minashim Ba'el Tevorach Mifano V'Shalom. This is not her handwriting. This is, of course, the, 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 the person who copied it, a tutor or somebody of the sort, the whole manuscript is in the same handwriting. But this is how, how it looks like in the not original. <laughs> okay, so um, the first interesting um, fact about these letters that is that to a great degree, 
the topic of the letters is the art of letter writing and corresponding correspondence itself. Um, I will just read a, a little bit from here. Um, one of the letters between the Kalmi brothers. As one who is commanded by and performs the bidding of our parents, I hereby send you a copy of this letter. He attaches another letter as part of my daily practice in the art of letter writing while keeping you informed of things that have a cor accord. And then in the second letter he writes, um, um, it, uh, you know, his brother, his teacher <coughs> won't let the younger, the younger brother spend time on letter writing and nevertheless the older brother continues writing. And I remind you, my brother, that if you, you silent yourself at this time, Beware lest you forget our love and fraternity, and I will come and it will come to pass that when your teacher sees fit for you to write and send you writing to us, my memories will arise before you in letter addressed to myself, as I do today, and so on. And there are letters and letters talking about letter writing, giving very little information about, you know, regards from my mother, we're all fine please write more letters <laughs> this is or I have to write to you or and so on so um, they're very much um, invested in corresponding and keeping the connection and may I imagine also under the pressure of adults to um, practice and see it as a daily habit to write letters to each other and to the adults um, I will say something about the style too. Um, we've seen the opening of Leona's letter to her brother, which is um, very characteristic of her letters in specific and the letters of her brothers as well with very flowery and very um, extensive openings. Um, in which she reveals her command of Hebrew and her knowledge of biblical text um, inserted in the right places. We, if we have time, we'll see it uh, later on, which stands in contrast, and I can't bring the examples now from the adult letters, with a very business-like um, manner of the adults. When her father writes a letter to his agent, he writes, you know, dear so-and-so, um, on this date, I received your letter in which you asked for this. I will answer you with that. On this date, this and that. And sometimes he mentions if there's something extra extraordinary that happened. The Pope dies. There's a new duke. There are new, uh, new, new laws, new perse persecutions against the Jews. There's always a new persecution against the Jews somewhere. Some kind of business failure or matter. There are goods, exchanges of goods. I sent you a, a shirt, please send me money. I sent you livestock, I sent you a cake. I sent you cheese, honey, and so on with this letter. Um, but they refrained from using this very flowery language, which I imagine has to do with time dedicated to letter writing and the desire of the young to um, express their knowledge to uh, impress the adults and to impress each other in their uh, flowery um, style and also maybe the help of the teachers and the tutors who are obviously um, overseeing um, this, um, this correspondence. Um, nevertheless, there is um, <coughs> some kind of tension, I would say, between the topic and the style because while the style is very formal and very elaborate, um, often the, the news they relate and the things they want, I believe they really want to talk about in these letters is much more um, sort of everyday uh, news and, and, and um, things that happen to them in daily life. Um, in one of the letters, Yukutiel writes to his brother about the death of the twins of his uh, aunt, who were born premature. Um, as a young man, you could feel his kind of discomfort and 
his lack of understanding of what exactly has happened. Um, nevertheless, he, you know, he tells the story and truth, the hearts of any who, who see, who see the, those twins must be deeply perturbated. Right. Um, and sending regards. Um, this is Leona writing to her brothers. Um, sort of passing family news is, is um, one of the important parts of this correspondence. Um, we can also see their engagement in, uh, in business. Um, well, these young people were starting to uh, make their first um, steps in the, in the family business, usually connected to some, there were usually, the, the young men were dealing with some family interest in another city, um, and very much dependent on the information they received from other family members to know where they were standing in terms of their debts and their um, and their accounts with other either partners or family members and we can see here um, one of the brothers writing to Leona um, sent me by a messenger the account books I forgot there for I cannot do without them so he's actually he's begging her <laughs> to send her those books already and it seems that her answer is that you know um, when these busy days have ended I will know what to respond to you, Master, and my and my heart shall not stray from your instructions. So he's begging, and she's we'll soon see what she's busy with. But she's busy, uh, and we can see here also the central role she has as a young adult, as a young woman, um, sitting at home, receiving all the information from her father and her brothers. Her the the mother, the stepmother, does not. Um, engage in this correspondence and she's, it seems like she's in truth responsible for collecting all the information and then sending again to the brothers and to her father the news she hears from the others when their letters they send letters to each other but they often cross they often receive them too late or two or three at the same time and maybe her information is more reliable um, than what um, she can send, than what they receive um, from each other. Um, so, um, and another detail which is has to do with Leona being uh, a woman or a young woman, um, which is of the most extraordinary accounts I've, I've ever seen. Um, her long letter, which I'll only bring a short part of it here, complaining about cleaning for Passover, which is, <laughs> I've, I, I've, we, we have images of Jews cleaning, both from Jewish sources and from non-Jewish sources, but I've never seen an account. Um, and she writes to her brother after she, after she says that she's too busy to send him the books, yes, especially during these days which are recalled and observed by all women, making their bodies contemptible by cleaning the house. All of these are hard labors which are unfamiliar to me and my soul detests them. She goes on and on to say what exactly, including the halakhic details of the cleaning, including the fact that there is a lack of servants. She cannot find non-Jewish women to clean um, the house for Passover and therefore she is forced to do it um, herself. Um, while the older brothers were busy um, with their business, the younger brothers are studying either with tutors or at yeshivot outside the house. It was usually the first time they have left um, the house and a lot of the correspondence has to do with their progress in learning or in this particular case of um, Avraham, his lack of progress in studies, and nevertheless the family writes, our minds are deeply satisfied that you have set aside worldly life to occupy yourself with eternal life, that is with the study. Um, not so much as we discover from the letters to come, um, but who's also studying is uh, Leona. 
Um, and here she describes it uh, you know, using biblical um, quotes. And my chief rose and stood upright to study the Torah, and I will study it day and night, and especially the laws of ritual slaughter, which we know was a common thing among Italian women. They um, knew the rules of slaughter, especially of chicken, and were able to um, perform here. But here we have an account of her actually studying it, and what exactly are the details um, she studied. And one last um, example that I will bring today is their attempt to act as agents and adults in the social world. I mean, we saw them active in the business world um, and telling their own stories, but in this uh, letter from Leona to one of her brothers, there is a whole plot here. Um, they're trying to, she um, was approached by her former teacher um, in secret. He asked her to write to the brother that, and we talked about protectia earlier, so he's seeking protectia. <laughs> um, he's looking for, as a teacher, his wife also supported him. <laughs> until uh, she passed away and now he's out of work and they need to find a way and obviously this is not simple they have to wait till a certain person arrives and then they will talk to another person which will talk to a different person and these people might have something to offer that will result in something and she concludes to say and you will know what to do but obviously what she gets here e either it was the idea of the teacher of, of herself an understanding of how this social structure society works that you need to approach one person and then talk secretly to another one and maybe things will come together at a certain time and location um, she expresses here her knowledge and ability as a uh, um, a lady of a head of a household in the coming years responsible for the people working for her this person was her former teacher just a short while ago so i i hope that i gave here at least a glimpse into this correspondence there are more letters in other volumes and other family collections that were also written by young adults and these needed to be taken into account as well when um, creating a synthesis of this. Uh, one of the things that have stopped me from writing about it that the letters themselves are so beautiful that you feel that there's nothing you can say um, after that. But obviously, um, this is not only about young adults, it's the accounts of young adults and the accounts of women. Leona is um, there's one or two other letters written by young women, which is, of course, um, unusual even until the 19th century and on. Um, and as, as a source that is somewhere between the personal and the more, um, I would say, general, because if they were copied and kept, they obviously had a greater social and cultural value value thank you very much thank you.